name is Cecile Riker, and I work for the athens Clark County Stormwater Management Program. The mission of the Stormwater Program is to protect and enhance the water resources of athens Clark County. And one of the ways we do this is through education and outreach. Today, I'm here to share a little bit of education with you around the topic of watersheds. Sound interesting? <coughs> Even though it may seem like a pretty dry topic, no pun intended, <laughs> watersheds are a very important component of environmental education. And if we want to talk about land or water pollution, we first have to talk about watersheds. Let's start by defining the term. What comes to mind when you hear the word shed? Perhaps a small building in your backyard? Just as a shed stores tools or household materials, a watershed is an area of land that, in essence, stores water. The official definition is a region or area of land bounded by a divide and draining to a particular body of water. Use your imagination to picture some mountains side by side. If it rains on top of those mountains, where does the water go? It has to fall down one side or the other, right? Those mountain peaks or ridges are boundaries or divides for different watersheds. Water will fall between those mountains, eventually finding its way into a creek or a stream, usually at the lowest point in the landscape. We typically identify a watershed by the creek or river that runs through it. Right now, I'm near Trail Creek, which is a small creek that runs through northern Athens. If it were to start raining on top of the building that I'm standing in right now, much of that water would eventually drain into Trail Creek. So we call this the Trail Creek Watershed. As you can see on this map, Trail Creek eventually joins up with the North Oconee River. So technically, I'm also standing in the North Oconee River Watershed. Eventually, the North Oconee River joins up with the Middle Oconee River south of Athens to form the Oconee River. So you guessed it, we're also in an area that's considered the Upper Oconee Watershed. When it rains, some of the water will naturally absorb into the ground, but some does not. Hard surfaces like roofs, sidewalks, parking lots, roads cannot absorb water. So instead of naturally infiltrating, water will run off of those surfaces. And unless we want our properties and buildings to be flooded within hours, we need an engineered system to handle that water. We call this system our municipal stormwater system. It includes infrastructure like storm drains, similar to the one you see here, pipes that go under roads or driveways, ditches that run alongside roads, and detention ponds that temporarily hold water. These practices capture runoff and direct it somewhere else. In athens Clark County, this traditional infrastructure does not treat the water once it receives it. Whatever gets caught in the water and flows into a storm drain will eventually make its way into a creek, but more about that later. Since we've learned a little bit about watersheds and drainage areas, I'm now going to introduce you to the Enviroscape. This is a model watershed, and today we're going to pretend that it represents a section of Athens. As you've probably noticed driving around here in Athens, we have a lot of different land uses. We have agricultural areas in town where crops are grown and livestock are bred. We have manufacturing areas or industrial parks. We also have a lot of residential areas where families live. Let's start by talking about this industrial area in the top corner. Perhaps this factory isn't following the proper disposal protocols and they're dumping chemical waste directly into this nearby stream here. So I'm going to pour some industrial sludge around this factory. This is what we call point source pollution because I can point directly to this area and say that they are the ones polluting this stream. Oftentimes, it's not that simple to pinpoint exactly where a pollutant is coming from once it's on land or in water. Let's look at this residential area next. We've got some houses here, and as you can see, there's a lot of green grass. I bet some of these properties have been using fertilizer on their lawns to keep them nice and green. So I'm gonna sprinkle on some fertilizer here. I also see that they have dogs and cats, and I bet those animals are going to the bathroom out in the yard. So I'm gonna sprinkle on some, some animal waste here to represent dog poop, that they probably didn't pick up after them in their own yard. Right across the way here is a farm. I bet they definitely have some animal poop on their property. We've got cows and horses out here. They also may have been using pesticides to keep pests off of their crops that they're growing. So I'm gonna put some pesticides down to represent some chemical there. And if you'll also notice, they have some bare soil here. Perhaps they're getting ready for next season's crop or they're doing some construction. 
So I'm gonna sprinkle on some soil to represent that bare dirt. Another one of the most common pollutants we see is litter. Fast food bags, drink cups, plastic bottles and cans, and plastic bags are some of the most commonly littered items in our community. And those items do not weigh very much. When they're improperly discarded from a moving vehicle or a pedestrian throws them on the ground, they're not going to stay in place for very long. Uh-oh. Is that thunder I hear? Sounds like a storm is moving in over Athens. Here comes the rain. If you look closely, you'll see our stream and lake here don't look too great. They look awfully polluted if you ask me. All of those components we just discussed have washed into our stream via our stormwater system. We consider this stormwater runoff a non-point source of pollution because it does not result from one single discharge point, but many different land uses over the entire area of the watershed. Let's review some of the pollutants we just talked about. Fertilizers and pesticides contain chemicals and nutrients. Too many nutrients can harm water quality by causing algae to grow, which depletes oxygen levels. It's a good idea to test the soil on your property before using any of these products, so you know exactly what nutrients it needs. And if you do use these items on your lawn, make sure to read the label carefully so you know the proper quantities to apply. Litter is not only unsightly, but it can clog up storm drains and harm aquatic life. Make sure to dispose of trash and recycling properly and take any hazardous materials like paint and batteries to the Center for Hard to Recycle Materials here in Athens. Remember to always scoop the poop and pick up after your pets. Animal waste contains bacteria. Some bacteria are helpful, but some are not. If harmful bacteria like fecal coliform washes into our water, it can make both humans and animals sick. Soil and sediment can clog up streams and make it hard for aquatic life to breathe. When soil covers the bottom of a stream, it also degrades habitat for animals. If you have a patch of bare soil on your property, use plants as ground cover. Planting trees can also help prevent erosion by holding soil in place. And if you must have bare soil for construction purposes, make sure you have the proper structures, like silt fence, installed. And now for the take-home points. Remember, what we do in our everyday lives can affect the entire community around us. The amount of these wastes may seem small when found in our own backyard or homes, but when we think about the watershed as a whole, those things can really add up. It's important that everyone in our community thinks about what they're doing on their own properties so that we can all have a healthier community to live in. Thanks for following along with our video today. Hope to see you next time.